Welcome back. Today we have a very special project. I will be replacing the battery on my MacBook laptop. I've had this laptop since April of 2014, so it's almost seven years old. The problem I'm having is that the battery life is not quite as good as it used to be. Um, according to a um, a plug-in or an application that I have in here called iStat Menu, the current battery health is 65%. The original rated battery capacity on this was 8,440 milliamp hours or 95 watt hours. And the current, or at least according to iStat Menu, the current capacity is 5,460 milliamp hours, um, but it doesn't show anything in watt hours. However, the main reason why I am choosing to replace the battery is because of something I will show you very quickly. I'm gonna remove all these screws. Keep in mind that these two are different from the rest of them, so make sure you keep these two separate from all the rest. So you'll notice I have a piece of tape covering a specific part here on the battery, or I should say in one of these cells. I'm not quite sure what that is, but that actually came out of that right there. So what, what I originally thought happened was that something was coming out of this cell, um, but what it looks like it was is this is a piece of rock or debris that got uh, caught up in the intakes here, the air intakes, and somehow got rattled down into this position, and then with the cover on top of that, it smashed down. And you can see a witness mark right there I don't think it's going to want to focus. There we go. So you can see that right there. That's what I think happened. So this to me is just an, an accident waiting to happen. And when these cells puff up, they really, really puff up. So what I did is I bought the iFixit battery kit. Now I did open this to inspect that everything was there. Um, but otherwise I have not gone into this at all. You get some stickers. You get the new cells and then a toolkit. So notice that uh, this also has a 95 watt hour rating on the box, but when you look at the text on the actual pack, it says 99 watt hours and 8800 milliamp hours, which is roughly 400 milliamp hours more um, in terms of rating than the original battery. So, you know, this is the kind of things you can expect when uh, when you get things from China. That said, I fix it while I've never been a customer to them before. Um, their reputation is very good. Uh, their reputation is very good for uh, um, helping out you know, people who just want to be able to fix their own stuff and not have to either be forced to upgrade or, you know, pay an extremely high dollar amount for replacements. Um, so now let's take a look at what comes in the toolkit. Get a couple cards to come to try and pry up underneath the cells because these cells are glued in, by the way. You get some little spudger picks. Looks like some cleaning cloth, some safety glasses, tweezers, 
some solvent, a pry tool, some nice gloves, and then, aha, I know this says the bits are in the driver handle, so you get a screwdriver and then a plastic pick. So, and this, all of this, the, the cells and the toolkit was $100, or $99. Um, which I think is a very good deal considering that if this label is correct, by replacing this pack of cells with that one, I should have more battery capacity than when I bought the computer brand new. Theoretically. So the best way to, uh, to remove the old cells to my knowledge, and this is going against iFixit's recommendations, keep that in mind, and these are not official recommendations that I am giving to you, because there is a chance that this new battery pack is not going to be compatible with the computer, it's going to say battery error, you know, get an official battery. That's a possibility, although knowing iFixit, I doubt they'd be selling it if it didn't work. Uh, there's also a chance that you could accidentally rip off one of these surface mount components, which would pretty much completely um, kill the computer, unless you could really have it masterful, masterfully repaired. All this is to say that if you don't know what you're doing, or if you are not willing and able to accept that by doing this you could permanently destroy your computer, then don't do this at all or have a professional do it. So that's the disclaimer out of the way. Uh, know what you're doing. The next thing to note is that you do not want to be doing this on a level surface. Um, so here I have a laptop tray that will prop it up. And what this will allow me to do is just dump the solvent in at the top and all the solvent will drain downhill into the bottom of the case because after this point here, there's nothing down here electronic. Um, there is the trackpad, but you know we can be careful around that. Um, you just don't want this solvent getting up onto the circuit board area. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to be doing this all in time lapse because it is a tedious and long process. Um, but I will say here are the steps. Remove the sticker. Very carefully remove the battery connector. Add some solvent and usually work from your way out to in. I have um, some dental floss here as well to try and pry underneath the batteries. Just remember, do not flex the cells, do not bend them, do not puncture them. These cells are drained all the way to zero, um, or you know, until the computer shut off, so they are at the lowest energy state they can be, and the odds of them actually catching fire or exploding is relatively low, but the chance is still there, so, you know. The safety glasses are here for a reason. Quick update, as you may have seen in that time lapse, I was struggling quite badly with the dental floss. It just didn't quite have enough um, enough strength to handle the job. But I got some beautiful hot pink um, line, and this is working a lot better. To the point now where I think this cell is pretty much completely undone. There we go. 
So that cell is now loose and very slimy. that is the old cells out and now I have a big job to clean up all the old adhesive what a mess here's a close look at the underside of the cells in case you're interested in any of the writing so that weighs a good bit. The thing I like about these uh, Mac computers is that they um, they do put a lot of battery in them. Um, almost half of the area, or I guess even volume inside the case is is battery, so that's really nice to see. I am not going to make you sit through watching me try to uh, scrape off all this old adhesive, so I will return when it's all clean and ready for the new batteries to go in. All right, so I've got the adhesive cleaned up as much as it really needs to be. And here is fitting the new battery pack. It fits reasonably well, not quite as good as the uh, as the old one, which is, you know, to be expected a little bit. The bolt holes for, or the, I guess they're not really bolts, the uh, machine screw holes on the subboard line up fine. And, uh, you know, I'll make sure that the lid fits on. But another thing um, I want to do is, before I glue these in, I want to connect it and make sure that it works. And to make sure that the trackpad still works, because if any of that uh, solvent got into the trackpad, it may cause it to not work quite right. So I think it would be best to test everything before I glue it in. All right, that was a little sketchy. Um, fitment there is not quite as good as I would like. Uh, it's rather stiff and now with this plugged in, these machine screw holes do not want to line up quite right, but uh, we'll, we'll continue. Yeah, that uh, the new battery pack is a little thicker than the other one. Let's see if it powers up. Yeah, good so far not so good it shouldn't double um it shouldn't make that chime twice it's a little concerning and no i'm not going to show you what's on my screen you're just going to have to use your imagination and it is currently booting all right it has booted to the lock screen and it is connecting to the internet everything seems to be working fine the battery is reading 74 percent okay the now what it's showing me, I'll take a screenshot here, and I'll show you on screen right now what that looks like. Uh, I'm currently getting health 100%, cycles 1, condition normal. It, now it, it's reading that the design capacity is 8600 milliamp hours, and the current capacity is 8905, which is again 105 higher than it listed on the pack itself. 
So I'm getting some interesting, let's say, contradictions of information here and there. The manufacturer date on this one looks like 16 September of 2020. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this thing down and uh, continue with the install so everything seems to be working fine. Um, the thing that worries me is the battery pack is a little thicker. Not so much that the cells are thicker, but the... How do I want to describe it? I'll, I'll show you once I have it flipped back over. So this bottom section of the lid doesn't want to seat down flat because of right there and right there those parts stick up a little bit too tall and it doesn't want to go back down so I'm gonna have to carefully remove that and this is a lot stiffer than the old one which is a little worrying to me So this rigid blue plastic shield shields these cells. And you know, it says very clearly on one of these labels, that one there, that you should not remove the plastic on this top portion until after the entire thing is placed down. And I imagine that is for a couple of reasons. One, to make sure that you get them all stuck and aligned properly. But two, the connections in the, these portions here probably should not be twisted. And if you twist them, you know, it could damage the connection. That would be my guess. However, it, I would really like to cut them because they don't really want to fit properly as is. They seem like they want a little bit more space. Will it stick back down? Eh, not quite as well. Um, it's hard to show you here, but these two cells are towed in a little bit, and I feel like they should be more parallel. And then these two outermost ones seem like they should be just pushed out a little bit further. Hmm. Am I confident enough to do it manually? I think so. So what I'm going to do, against their instructions once again, I'm going to peel off this plastic. then peel off the adhesive cover. Just to try and make sure the alignment is as good as I can get it. But I want to make sure that I don't twist those connections at the bottom. Because that would be bad news. This portion here also seems like it sticks up just a little bit too tall. Yeah, these shiny pieces here. I'll just take that off. These, there are four shiny tabs there. Sorry for the bad framing. These four do not want to sit flat enough, um, which is, you know, a little concerning because those are going to be pushing up hard against the lid. And while that lid is only, you know, several thousandths thick, hmm, hmm. 
Well, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna leave that for a few minutes. My next order of business is actually to re-solder paste the CPU and GPU. I'm actually gonna have that in a separate video. Um, however, you won't have to sit through that in this video. I'm gonna jump until that is done. Then we'll come back here. If you're interested in that, go and check out that video. So status update for the batteries. These are in, they are stuck down with the new adhesive that comes pre-installed on them. Uh, I'm still having a little bit of fitment issues with how tall these connections, these um, the leads are that bring the electricity from the cells up to this daughter board. And then the this daughter board does not really want to line up too well to the chassis where it has to get screwed in. And this is pretty stiff, the connector for the um, for bringing the battery power onto the motherboard. So my experience so far with this kit is eh, 7 out of 10. We'll see how easily these parts go back in. The thing is you just don't want to be yanking on stuff too hard because circuit boards are not known for their ruggedness. I'm going to take that sticker back off again. Sorry, I had to cut the video there. It was just, it was so difficult to try to get that thing in with, uh, and there's a lot of strain on these connections here. So the quality of the components, I mean, they even have this thing conformally coated, which the Apple circuit board is not. That is great. So it, it seems like this is a very well designed, engineered and built product. On a, in a vacuum, you know, on its own, it seems very good. But when it comes to how well it's actually fitting in the product it is intended to work with, hmm, just doesn't seem like it's quite there. And especially these parts here in the middle, those four connections onto that circuit board, the 12, 8, and 4 volts, and I'm guessing the center, that one there is ground or 0 volts. <sighs> um, yeah, we'll see, because I don't, because what if those short out on the case? That's my concern. Let's take a look at the original batteries again. So here's the work that Apple did. It looks very deliberate how these were bent, and they are much flatter than the stuff there. So let's... Let's remove this sticker here and see what they have underneath. So this is another conformally coated board, or at least part way. I feel like this Apple one was more well designed and engineered for the product here, but that makes sense because, well, it is the factory part. These just seem more like someone bent them over and they weren't quite as deliberately bent. So, eh. I, uh, you get what you pay for. This is only $100 you know, pack of cells. 
I'm just very nervous about it shorting out on the case lid. Yeah, because it is not wanting to, like these tabs here, are not wanting to sink down into those two pockets. And I'm pushing pretty hard on that. Oh, there they go. All right, that's a little better. Let's go ahead and put those screws back in. Okay, boot test the second. boot time this time was much quicker to get to the, uh, well, I should say it was much quicker to get to the booting screen this time. Not sure why or if there's any particular reason for that. Probably not. All right, and we're booted up on the main screen again. So I would call this successful. We're now at, uh, rated here 73 percent so we went down one percent from the previous boot makes sense um now the directions at this point say to let the let the battery come up to 100 percent on the charger for two hours let it sit at 100 percent for two hours and then use the computer at a modest you know, amount of current draw. I mean, don't have your screen at full brightness, don't have the fans on, don't be maxing out the CPU, just normal use all the way down until it shuts off. And then that will calibrate the, uh, the system to understand the capacity of the battery. And then you'll know the capacity of your battery because each one is probably going to be very slightly different. So that about does it for this. Um, if I have any issues come up with this or... What's going to be in the next video is the solder, uh, not solder, sorry, thermal compound, thermal paste. I was thinking of, th of solder paste for some reason. Um, if I have any issues about the about this video and the next video, um, I'll make an update to it. So stay tuned for the next video on the um, on the you know reapplying thermal paste to the CPU and GPU. There is a uh, a disappointing moment in that video that, uh, you know, is one that you should see so you can laugh at me. It's, a, it's good fun. It's good fun. So, until next time, see ya.